everyone, it's James from Iris Computing here. Today I've got a quick tutorial for you on how to gain access to a Windows account. There's two ways of doing this. We can do it in a destructive manner, which would be to replace the password on the account we're trying to access, and a non-destructive manner, which is to gain access to the files without changing any passwords or any user credentials. So, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to be doing everything inside a virtual machine. This is merely so I can just capture um, everything for you guys step by step without having to restart the machine over and over again. Either way you do this, it's going to work exactly the same. So what we're going to do is gain access to this account here, Iris Computing. Now the only thing we need is a bootable command prompt. So we need to boot in to an environment that allows us to use the command prompt that isn't this install of Windows on the hard drive at the moment. So I'm going to be using a Windows 7 install disk. Any Windows install disk has it. Most internet security disks as well have this, so something like a McAfee or a Norton disk will allow you to boot up into that disk and then access the command prompt. I'm going to be doing this in Windows 7, however it works on any version of Windows. So, what we need to do then is restart and boot into our disk. So, pop your disk in, pop your USB stick in, etc. Let's restart the machine. Now, everybody's computer is different. What we need to do is access the boot menu, so for me it's to press escape. Sometimes as delete, sometimes as F12, it varies depending on computer, but it will turn you, tell you, sorry, when you first turn the computer on. So I'm going to select CD-ROM drive here and boot into Windows. There we are, so in the Windows install environment now. If you're using a Windows disk, you can press Shift and F10, and that'll open up the command prompt. If you're using anything else, you just have to find the command prompt. So, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna use the disk part program. This will just allow us to check the drive letter that a hard drive with the user account um, on is using. It's usually the C drive, but sometimes it's changed. So we'll just type in disk part. I'll put everything that I type into the command prompt into the description below. So now they're in disk part, we're going to type in list vol, which is for list volume. There we are. And you can see here we've got two drives. We've got the D drive, which is currently our Windows disk, and then the C drive, which is the hard drive with the account on that we want to access. So let's exit out of disk part. Now, the trick to all of this is we're going to replace the sticky keys function, which is a function you can use wherever you are in Windows, even on the logon screen, which is pressing shift five times. We're going to replace that program with another command prompt. So wherever we are in Windows, we can press shift five times and then boot into a command prompt. Very clever, very easy thing to do as well. So what we need to do is type in copy and then the drive letter we just found, which is C in my case. Windows system 32 and then sethc.exe. This is the sticky keys executable. We're going to move that to the root of the C drive just so we have that for safekeeping. So I'll yes to that, to the override. And now we're going to copy the command prompt. So C Windows system 32 CMD exe, which is the command prompt to where Seth C exe is. So space and then C Windows system32 sethc.exe. Press enter, accept the overwrite. There we are, that's all done. So we're done in here now, so we can exit our command prompts and we can reboot the machine. So now we're back in the Windows environment. So if I press shift five times now, this would usually bring up sticky keys, but as we've just changed it, it brings up command prompt. So this is a really useful hack that just allows us to pretty much change anything on the computer without even having access to it. So we're going to use the net user command. The net user command allows us to change, add, delete, um, and view various different user accounts on the computer. So if I type in net user, press enter. 
you can see at the moment we've got three accounts on the computer. We've got the hidden administrator account, the guest account, account which is completely useless and the iris computing account which is what we're trying to gain access to at the moment so to use the net user command we type in net user followed by the username in this case because this username iris computing has a space in it we need to get command prompt to recognize iris computing as a single word or a single command if i was to type it in as it is now it would recognize iris as one thing and computing as the other so the way of doing this is by using quotations. So if I type in a beginning quote, Iris Computing, perhaps if I can type, close quote, and then press enter, this will show us all the information for this account, Iris Computing. The important bit we want to look at at the moment is this here. So this account is an administrator. So what we need to do is change the password. The way of doing this is to type in net user, quotes again, iris computing, close quote, and then a star or an asterisk. This will then prompt us for a new password. So we can type in a new password, type in it again. That's it. Now if we exit out of command prompt, type in the password you just set. There you go. We've got access to the account. So this is really, really useful little hack that just enables you to change passwords. If you've forgotten the password, if a virus has changed your password, etc., you can get into your account still just by using command prompt. There you go. So straight away, we can jump into File Explorer and we can view all the files that we've got on here. There we are. So that was the destructive manner. At the moment, we've changed the password. If you want to gain access to these files without changing any passwords, without changing any user credentials, we've got to do it in a slightly different way. So if I log out of here a second, get back on the log on screen. And then we'll jump back into command prompt again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new administrator. We're going to create a new user. So the way of doing this is to type in net user, followed by a username of choice. I'm just going to use iris forward slash add. And now if I type in net user again, you can see we've now got four accounts on the computer. The administrator, the guest, our new one, iris, and then the one we want to gain access to, iris computing. So if I type in net user and iris, you can see at the moment, Unlike the Iris computing user, we're just a user, we're not an administrator. So if I try and access the Iris computing uh, files with this Iris account that's only a user, it's going to prompt us for the administrator password, which if we're doing it in a non-destructive manner, of course, we don't know. So what we need to do is make the user Iris administrator. To do that, we use the net local group command. So if I type in net, then local group, then the group in question, which is administrators, followed by the username, which is iris, forward slash add. There we go. Now if I type in net user iris again, we're now an administrator, which is brilliant. So if I exit out of this, reboot the machine, There we go, so we've now got the option to switch user and other users here. So what I'll do is I'll type in the username we just made, which is Iris. I didn't set a password, but press enter. This will then log us into a brand new account. So we've now got a brand new administrator account. So if I click on File Explorer down here, and then go to Computer, Local Disk, Users. There are so a few different users here at the moment. But the one we're looking for is Iris Computing. If I double click on this, you see it says we don't have permission to access this folder. And that's why it was important earlier for us to make this an administrator account. If it wasn't an administrator, we'd only be able to gain access in this way by knowing the password to the Iris Computing account. And because we're doing this in a non-destructive way, of course, we don't know the password. So I press continue there. There we go. And now we've got access to all of these different files. There we are, it's the one we saw earlier and the pictures on the account as well.
So to finish all this off then, what we're going to do now we've got all the information we need is log off of this account. Pop back into command prompt. And now we're going to delete the account we just made. So we're removing the evidence from the system. Now you don't want to be doing this in a malicious way. If a professional looks at this, they can easily see that you've created a new account and you've accessed the information on someone else's account. So only use this for your own personal needs. I have seen a few viruses on the market that will completely disable your user account and stop you from gaining access to it. This method is really, really useful if you're trying to get and save your files that you've got in the account before you create a new one. Um, yeah, so what I'll do now is just type in net user followed by the username iris and then forward slash delete. Simple as that. And now if I reboot the system, that will remove this iris computing account. So thanks for watching the tutorial. If you found it useful, please like. If you've got any comments, any queries, um, or any suggestions on any future tutorials I can do, please leave them in the comments below. If you found this useful, please subscribe. 